Hi there, Christy from Freezer Meals 101 here. I'm on my own today. No, Charla, it's just me. We are doing our own Christmas baking special. So I'm in my living room. I'm, I'm a little dressed up, but there's a reason for that. Partly because it's Christmas, partly because this is option one for a dress for our Christmas party. At the end of the video, I'll show you option two, and then you let me know in the comments which one you like better. The more I wear it, the more I like this one. It's a deep crimson. I got it on Amazon. It wasn't expensive, but I love this dress. So what do, what do we have going on today? We've got our favorite Christmas recipes from our house. I have something extra special to show you. This. This is a handmade cookbook that my mother-in-law gave to my husband when he was a kid. He probably didn't appreciate it a whole lot at the time when he was like 12, but I appreciate it now and I use these recipes. It is their favorite family recipes and the peanut butter balls that I'm gonna show you later are from this book. Um, his mom got the recipe from her sister-in-law, which would be my husband's auntie, at a cookie exchange in 1988. And so she saved it because they love it and I make these all the time. And there's some interesting things that happen in that recipe. So make sure you stay tuned. We're gonna get right to it. This microwave peanut brittle is a recipe I got from my mom in December of 2008. I always write the dates on my recipe cards and where they came from. This is a good one because it's versatile. You can do it with almonds or with peanuts. And in this case, I'm gonna do peanuts today. And also it's really easy because you can do it in the microwave. You don't have to worry about a candy thermometer. You don't have to worry about the soft ball or the hard ball stage, if you know what I'm talking about. It just makes it and it's kind of a no fail. It does it every time. Start it with a cup of white sugar, half a cup of corn syrup and one and a half cups of peanuts or almonds. And you wanna mix those together Using a wooden spoon, you can mix them. And then here's the funny thing. You're gonna put the wooden spoon in the bowl and put it in the microwave and cook it for three minutes with the spoon in the bowl. I don't really know what it does. I think maybe it prevents it from boiling over. I don't know, but I always do it and it always works, so I do it. Then once it comes out, you stir it again, put it back in for three more minutes. This time when you take it out, you stir in two tablespoons of butter and then back in for three more minutes with the spoon in the bowl. And when that three minutes is done, working very quickly, you wanna stir in the vanilla and baking soda, mix it well, and then spread onto a buttered cookie sheet and let set. It's very hot coming out, so this is one spoon you don't wanna lick. And I didn't get the video part of me cracking it, but I used the butt end of a knife but you can, once it's set, you can also, and like, I mean, literally cooled, you can break it with the butt end of a heavy knife, or you can just do it with your hands. And it stores nicely, it freezes well. I make this ahead every year and I freeze it, and it's always a hit. This is a batch of Kris Kringle cookies. In fact, it's a big batch of Kris Kringle cookies. It makes about four dozen, and it's got all of the elements of Christmas in it. It's got pecans and chocolate, white chocolate chips and cranberries. So it is just Christmas in a cookie. And I love this one. You can find it on the craft website um, anytime you wanna look it up. It calls for two and a quarter cups of flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, one cup of butter softened, a cup of granulated sugar, half a cup of packed brown sugar, two eggs, a teaspoon of vanilla, Three packages of Baker's white chocolate chopped, and in this case, I use white chocolate chips because that's what I had handy. Two cups of chopped pecans, and you can see in the beginning of this video, I spent a little bit of time with my nut chopper, which is one of my favorite kitchen gadgets, but you can do it with a knife or you can buy them chopped already. And two cups of dried cranberries. You wanna preheat your oven to 375, combine your flour and baking soda and salt, and also beat your butter and sugars in a large bowl with a mixer into light and fluffy. I really go to town with um, creaming my butter and my sugars. Gradually add your flour mixture, mixing well after each addition. I am a big believer in scraping down the sides of the bowl to make sure everything mixes evenly. So you wanna stir in your remaining ingredients, 
and then plop them on a pan. I like to do 12 on a cookie sheet. It gives a, a nice amount of space in between. And you want to bake for 9 to 11 minutes or until they're just starting to lightly brown. You can cool on a baking sheet and then remove to your container and they will freeze beautifully. These Mars bar squares are a crowd favorite. I got this recipe from a coworker at a company potluck almost 20 years ago and it has been a hit in our house ever since. You start out with four Mars bars, you chop them up, add them to your saucepan, put in half a cup of butter, and then you're going to melt them. It takes a little while for that nougat to totally break down. And so I do let it get it bubbly. I don't worry about overboiling it too much. It doesn't go really hard on me or anything. So it seems to be okay. A footnote, you can also do this in the microwave. Go for two minutes and then start stirring every 30 seconds. And you can also do this in the microwave with a wooden spoon. It'll be great. Once your chocolate is melted, you want to add in three cups of Rice Krispies and incorporate them well. Put them into a buttered 8x8 pan and then you're going to do the topping. Again, you can do this in the microwave, but I did it on the stovetop. It's one cup of chocolate chips with a quarter cup of butter. Melt it until it's incorporated and add it to the top of the Rice Krispie treats. Let it set to room temperature. It's easy to cut on a cutting board. Cut it up, store it, and freeze it. Enjoy! Start by preparing your pan. Chocolate confetti squares. Start with a quarter cup of butter or margarine. In this case, I'm using margarine today. Half a cup of peanut butter, one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips, and a bag of miniature colored marshmallows, which is eight ounces or 250 grams. I'm going to Melt it all together in a saucepan and stir it well until it's nicely mixed and melted. And then I'm going to let it cool. Then I'll add the marshmallows and mix them together and put it in the pan that I've already prepared and let it cool. This freezes nicely. It can also be made with butterscotch chips. At our house, it just isn't Christmas without the butterscotch confetti squares. You want to start out by lining an 8x8 pan with some wax paper. Then in a saucepan, you want to melt your butter or margarine, a quarter cup. Add half a cup of peanut butter and one cup of your chips. You can use chocolate chips, but in this case, we're using butterscotch chips. You want to stir it until it's all melted together and then let it cool. And then once it's cooled enough that you can touch your hand to the bottom of the pan, then you want to add in your marshmallows and they won't get melty. You want to mix them all together and put them into your 8x8 pan. Let them set and refrigerate. Then you can cut them up and put them into your container and make sure that you label it appropriately so that your family doesn't eat it on you. It's old. And look at, look at the beautiful handwriting. And I look at my chicken scratch. It says, it's okay to freeze. She hand wrote all of their family's favorite recipes in a book for him so that he could have someday. And she wrote a really beautiful inscription. And you can pause it and read it if you want. But gosh, it was just so nice to have. So these actually come from her sister-in-law, Shirley. So thank you so much for this recipe, Shirley. These peanut butter balls are the best. And when I say that, it's because, I'm sorry if you know me and I've tried your peanut butter balls, but I like mine the best. I haven't really found another one that I like better. Uh, they're either too dense or too sweet or too something. This is, this is just kind of perfect. It's the perfect peanut butter ball. <laughs> so you start it with a cup, of peanut butter, it can be crunchy or smooth, I prefer crunchy, and a cup of icing sugar. 
You're going to mix that together and add in a tablespoon of softened margarine or butter. Then you're going to somewhat crush your Rice Krispies, but not all the way. You still want them to be crunchy, but not so bulky. How about that? And you're going to chop your nuts. I have my little nut chopper that I use. You're going to add those in and mix it. In hindsight, I wish I had used my stand mixer for this. I might make a note on my recipe to use it because it's a little bit heavy duty for the hand mixer. I use my tablespoon scoop to divvy it out onto the tray and then I go back and I make them all into nice little balls. It's supposed to make 37 one inch balls. I made 36 so I feel pretty good about that. You put it in the fridge for two to three hours. Here's the weird part. When you go to coat these balls in the chocolate, you're going to shave some wax into it. It's just paraffin wax. You would find it in the canning section at the store. It is technically food safe. If you ingest a little bit of it, it's okay. And you would use it for canning to seal your jelly back in the olden days before they had self-sealing lids for jars. So you're going to melt four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate and have this two tablespoons of your shredded wax. What it does is it thins the chocolate out a little bit so it's not super heavy and it coats nicely on your, on your peanut butter ball. It gives it a bit of a shine and it gives it a little bit of a crunch. You're gonna melt those together in a double boiler and you're going to dip your balls using two forks. And I skipped a step here. You're supposed to place them on a wax paper or on a tray where the chocolate can drip and then you put them in the Christmas cups. But I just skipped that step and went straight to the Christmas cups. So mine are a little bit messy, but they're done and done is better than perfect. You are going to want to keep these refrigerated until you serve them. When you have a house full of people and your house is warm, they do start to melt a little bit, but they freeze beautifully. They're great to make ahead because they are a little bit of extra work, but they are worth it. Okay, I'm back and I'm in option number two. This is a black dress. It's kind of hard to see. We'll do a, a shot of a full length. It's a cocktail dress. It's got cute little stripes and some mesh stuff in it. It's an older dress. I've had this for a few years and I have worn it before for Christmas parties, but I like it because it's got a nice big open neckline and it's flattering and it's all the things. So you tell me in the comments if you like dress number one or dress number two. My husband seems to like both, but he said the red one looked easier to take off, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, husbands judge things differently than wives, I guess. Um, so I hope you enjoyed those recipes. If you were paying close attention to the peanut butter balls, you would notice that I put 36 peanut butter balls in the fridge and I took out 33 peanut butter balls to put in the chocolate. Um, the fridge must have just eaten three somewhere along the line. I don't know. I don't know how that happened. I mean, nobody in my family seems to know either. So that is also why I label things like chicken livers, <laughs> just, just to throw them off a little bit and maybe not let them be so snoopy. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas from our family to yours and enjoy some of this baking. And I just hope you have a really great Christmas season. Cheers.